God created the heavens and the earth. And there's the word God. In English, it's our word good. God is good. We change the name from good to God. That's all it is. But the Hebrews had many, many names for God. You know that. You've learned that in theology, but there's some things you don't know. I'm sure you don't, because I didn't know these things. The word for God here is Elohim. And that's plural. It means, it doesn't mean many gods, but Christian theology teaches it means, oh, God is Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? Is that what you learned? Yeah. Yeah, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, the Jews didn't know that. The Jews didn't understand that. So to him, this plural, Elohim, it meant all of the spirits, the angels, God, El Elyon, God above all gods. You know the rest of them. Jehovah Tenechmu, Jehovah Nisi, Je and all of them, you know them all. And that's not how you say it. You don't say Jehovah. Because that's not a name. His name is yud hey vav hey And there's no way you can say it. You can say Jehovah, but that doesn't mean anything. What this means is Yah, Ihiya, and Ove. I will be. No, I am, I will be, and I am. Yah, Ihiya, will be, and I am. Now, we don't say, oh, oh, I, oh, will be, was, and uh, am, we love you, and no. It's because at the, at the uh, bush, Moses said, who are you, remember? And he didn't know. Moses didn't know who God was. And many of the Old Testament people didn't know who God was either. But the Elohim, that included the angels, and the fallen angels. It included Satan. Remember the book of Job? It said the sons of God went up above. And God, El Elyon, which meant God most high, said, do you see my servant Job? How wonderful he is? He said, yeah. Let's see how wonderful he is. And the accuser had permission to give Job whack. You know what happened. He lost his house, he lost his children, he lost his money, he lost everything, and his wife started saying, you, look what you did, curse God and die. No, I can't do that. And then Satan came again with the sons of God, and the sons of God are the Elohim, those are the sons of those are the morning stars that sang together in the very beginning. In El Elyon, God Most High, he said, Have you seen my sin spirit, my, my son Job, how wonderful he is? He said, oh, skin for skin. Let him have it. Show him what it's like. And then he'll curse you to your face. And then El Elyon, which meant God Most High, said, have your way with him. And Job went through hell. Remember? And I always said, why would God allow that? El Elyon, God most high. See, even they didn't know his name. Do you know what his name is? Many names for God here. The Jews don't say this, but they say, Adonai Elohim. Morukhatan, Adonai El-Kim, blessed are you, Adonai. And they put Adonai in the place of this because they don't want to say it. But that word comes from the old language, Aton. And that was the word that they used 
back in Egypt for the sun god. And if you read Psalm chapter 104, you will read the poem of Aton, the sun god. Where is Aton? The sun god. And they say, some say that Joseph was the one that wrote Psalm 104 and Psalm 105. The creation song. And they didn't know who he was. Because it was a complex. It was a network. And everything that had life was part of the Elohim. Including Adam. When Adam died, his Elohim went up to join the rest. And what about an animal that had a spirit? No. An animal soul goes down. We read that in the Psalms, or in, uh, in uh, Ecclesiastes. But everything that had life and that had sentient life, which means they could understand things, were part of the Elohim, including the first Adam who failed. And so they didn't know who God was. And uh, in fact, they had many names for him at that time. And you read and open it up now, Psalm 82. I'm going to show you the Rosetta Stone of the Old Testament. You know what the Rosetta Stone is? Ah. The Rosetta Stone was the stone that they found that translated the hieroglyphics. They didn't know what this old, old language was until they found this stone and it interpreted it for them. So, go to Psalm 82. And Jesus quoted this. Remember the situation? It was a very interesting time because the Jews wanted to kill him. And Jesus said, for what thing do you kill me? Because you make yourself out to be the Son of God. <gasps> as high as God. And Jesus said, you know, how can you say that if God the Father sanctified me and sent me into the world, how can you say that I'm blaspheming? Because it says here in Psalm 82, Jesus said that you are God's Elohim, but you will die like men. Now, there's something very interesting here. Let's read this. Psalm 82. God, Elohim, stands in the congregation of the mighty and judges the gods. No. El. This one yeah. judges the gods. So it's confusing already. And then the psalmist says, How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? And go down there to verse 6. It said, I said, who's I? Who said I? God most high. He said, you are gods. And all of you are children of El Elyon, God most high. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Oh God, Elohim, judge the earth and you will inherit all nations. And the Jews could not answer Jesus because they didn't know what to say. It was too complicated, too confusing for them. But there was more to it because remember when Jesus told them? He, he said, uh, what was that? If Christ is the Son, why is it that David calls him Lord? Remember that scripture? And they thought, what's the answer to that? We don't know. Because the Lord was not known. That was Jesus who was to come. And he was from the beginning, from the foundation of the world. He was in the creation. God created everything through Jesus. But Jesus was not known. Even in the Old Testament, David, he understood who the Messiah would be, but he didn't know that it would come from him. And you know, did you know who he came from? Which one of David's sons did Messiah come from? Was it Solomon? No, yeah, that's right, Nathan. 
His name means gift. And Nathan would bring forth the gift. And whose great, 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 great grandfather was that? Mary's father, whose name was Heli. Ha-Eli. So his name was Eli, actually. And that was the fleshly line of Jesus. But it was complicated. And it was confusing. Now, what I'm going to tell you here opened my eyes to everything. And I thank God for this. And I thank God I can share this. Because I was confused, too. I learned all of these things. And do you know what I had to do with all of this? I'll show you. I had to throw it all away. Why? Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Listen, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you will worship the Lord your God. And the Jews said to me, Peter, don't you know that God is one? But their idea of one was somebody out there all alone. And you couldn't touch him. But my idea of one is what Jesus said in John 17. We are one together. Husband and wife, they are one. But Yechad, in one. Oh, so the mystery is starting to be answered. And Philip said, Show us the Father then. And we, because Jesus spoke about the Father again and again and again. Show him to us and we will believe it. And Jesus smiled and said, Have I been with you these three and a half years? And Philip, don't you know me? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So, all those names turn into one name. Ba 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 That's Hebrew. Chinese. Ba 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 It's easier to say ba 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 than father, 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 father. Ba 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 ba. Abba, 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 abba. My father. Avi, 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 avi. Holy Father. And all of that disappears now. In the day of the disciples, it did not disappear. But here's what happened. Jesus died on the cross. He descended into hell. He took the keys away from the devil. And he rose from the dead. And when he ascended on high, he threw the Satan out of heaven. We read that in Revelation. And we see Jesus saying that too. Threw him out. And the revelation says, Whoa, 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 you inhabitants of the earth, for Satan has come down to you. And that's us. He knows his time is short. But he's no longer in heaven. That's why we have a new heaven. We also have a new earth, but we haven't been there yet. That's where Jesus took his blood to the altar, and that's paradise. But there it is, and I saw something that changed my life. The Father has never been revealed until Jesus came and revealed him to us, and that takes away all the confusion. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. How does God treat me? How do I know if he loves me? Well, it's how I am toward my children. Will I give you a stone if you ask for a fish? Will I give you a scorpion if you want something as some bread? No. The good gifts that the Father gives us. And the Father wants you to know that you are his son and you are one in him. Well, now, let me tell you, in the beginning, God made Adam breathe the breath of life 
Christian is no spirit, so we all know the Greek term. Blew into his nose, and he became a living being, and God put Adam over all of the earth to rule the fish, and the cows, and the pigs, and the chickens. But when Jesus rose from the dead, God put everything under his feet. And now Jesus rules the cosmos. And we will rule with him. We will sit with him in his throne. Our headship is in heaven now. And one with the Father. Jesus said, my Father and what? And yours. The revelation. The disciples couldn't get that. The disciples couldn't understand that. Even after Jesus rose from the dead, he said, touch me not, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But once he did, his whole nature, his whole character, as a man, one with God. Ecce homo. That's what Pilate said. Behold the man. The man. Our God in heaven. Oh, what kind of theology is that? Simple. It's so simple. And when you know that, everything in your life changes. I know. My son says, Dad, you're just like Jesus to me. And you know what? It's not because I'm so good, but I practice the things that Jesus taught us. And Jesus, when he arose, brought many sons into glory. Can you call Jesus the Father? Oh, yes. Isaiah chapter 54. Born unto what's the child is born? Unto us a son is given. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon the shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Oh, Jesus? Not just Jesus, me too. Oh, and the Jews picked up stones to throw at him, and they'll pick up stones to throw at you. How dare you! The church told me I couldn't touch the glory of God. But you know what Jesus in John 17 says? I extend my glory to you. I give it to you. Those are my children. Glory to God. His name is the Father. And you know what else? In the Old Testament, it was the Elohim. But the Elohim is no more. What do they call the Elohim today? I love this. It's called the body of Christ. And that's you and me. It's simple. Body of Christ, the Father. How easy can it be? Now, with this, there's no complication. With this, there's no going back to the Old Testament and think, oh, God's going to strike me dead. There's no confusion. Remember, in Chronicles and in 2 Samuel, when it said Satan told uh, David to number the people, remember that? And then in 2 Chronicles, it said, the Lord did, or vice versa. I'll tell you what it was right now. But um, he didn't know God from the devil. Nobody did. And it was right here. Okay. God numbering the people. 2 Samuel 24, 1. Satan numbering the people. 1 Chronicles 21, 1. What was it? Was it God or Satan? Well, it was the Elohim. And in the Elohim was Satan. And even today, people are tricked by this. And the Jews are under the administration of this Elohim. And it's not a good administration. Paul calls it the administration of death. 
And this is the administration of life, eternal life, eternal holiness. So you know, um, I was in China uh, and trying to tell people about my religion and God the Father. I had class of seniors and I went to the teacher's lounge and I took my coffee and it was very cold. And the bell rang, ring, and I went with the other teachers. They all spoke English because it was the English department of the university. And I sat down, and as soon as I sat down to drink my coffee, this girl, teacher in the back, just like a witch, ha! I know about you Christians, just like a demon. A witch, I thought, sounded like a witch. I know everything about you Christians and your, your uh, religion and your history. And somebody else said, yeah, you're a hypocrite because you don't go to church. And I said, and you're a fool because there's no church in China to go to. I can have church in my house or whatever. And I was upset. I was really angry. And I said to her, okay, you. I was older than those other teachers. Not much. But I said, you, I'll tell you, I'll believe you if you do one thing for me. I got her a Bible. Go home after class. Go into your room. Find a candle and light the candle. And take it quietly into another dark room and set it in. Close the door. Go down on your knees and say, Jesus, if you're real, show yourself to me. <laughs> the bell rang. And she jumped up. They were all scared to death and they ran out the door. And I said, good. Now I can drink my coffee. And I drank my coffee. Get out of here. That was enough of that. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't see her again for two years. Two long years. And one day, two years later, she came, she came to my door and knocked on the door. I answered, I said, what are you doing here? Do you remember me? I said, of course I remember you. I haven't seen you for all these years. And she said, I have to tell you something. And I said, what? Do you remember that day in the teacher's lounge when you said that to me? I said, yeah. I said, what's the matter? She said, when I left, it's like ghosts were chasing me. I went home and I was afraid. And then my husband, I got so mad at him, I started screaming at him. And I was kicking my children around. I was so mad, I was losing my mind. I was going crazy for a whole year, back and forth. And I hated you for what you did to me. I just hated you. And I said, well, what did you do? She said, <laughs> I went into the room and found a candle. That's the Catholic way, right? <laughs> and I lit that candle, and I set it down, and I got on my knees, and I put my hand up like this. Jesus, if you're real, show yourself to me. <gasps> she said, heaven open, and it's like, God's favor just fell on her. And she started weeping and she was set free and she was so excited. She told her husband and he became a Christian. And she told her children and started teaching them about Jesus. And she said, and I'm saved. I know who God is now. It's Jesus, Mr. Snyder. I said, that's right. And you know what? She became the head of that language school that I opened there, teaching English and for the Chinese, and everybody that came, she taught them about Jesus over the last next 20 years. Yeah. Who is God? God is the Father. God is the Son. God is the Holy Spirit. Oh, I don't say that dare to say that God is me, but guess what? We are one in them. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I never tell this story, but I'm going to tell you this because you're my friends. <laughs> I was uh, in China for a number of years and I wanted to do everything right and I'm 
made many mistakes and I was not pleasing with God, so I worked so hard. I started, I built 28 schools with the help of people in America. I started four language schools. I even won a medal for my work in education. And we were so popular that they did a documentary on my family. Did you see that? You can see it on YouTube. And all these things I did, but I said, why am I not close to God? I looked at the Old Testament and I saw how he was angry with the people. I even saw scriptures in the Old Testament that were terrible. Ah, my goodness, 1 Kings 22, 2.22 with Ahab and Jehoshaphat, with the lion spirit. I said, how can that be Jesus or God? Hosea 9.15, I hated them, God said. I said, is that the God that I know? Is that the God that I worship? I don't want to be under him if that's the way it's going to be. But I pray and I kept going with the Lord. And one night, I had a vision. And I'm going to tell you about this. I want this on the camera. It was wonderful. In that vision, I was a little child. And this beautiful being, I don't know, it was an angel or what, but he was standing over the waters. And the waters were so blue, like here, out there in the uh, Indian Ocean. And I looked at this being, and his eyes were like two oceans. They were so deep, they were so blue, and they were so beautiful. And I looked at him and I thought, I wish I could be like him, but he won't have me. And I thought, all I can say is this guy was just like wisdom. Pure wisdom, and he held out his hand. And I was a little boy in that vision, and he took me by the hand and he took me up to heaven. I thought I could go see Jesus. When we got up there, I could hardly see anything. It was like shadows. But I heard people talking because, like Paul said, words that were so high and inexpressible. And as I was looking around, I knew my spirit was seeing things. But my natural eyes were not. And he took me back down. And he said one thing to me. Because I was a child, he said, don't forget to love the children. First John 5, I think it is. And so I came back and I was just in love with everyone because they were all children to me. And I thought, this was the most wonderful thing in the world. And somebody came and gave me a book. Peter, you have to read this book. I said, well, what is it? I don't know, but God sent me all the way to China to give you this book. And I said, okay, you take care of the group today. And I start reading it of a guy who this beautiful being took up to heaven because they were going to go see Jesus. And they got up there and there was nobody on the throne. And he looked at that beautiful angel that was full of love and wisdom. And the angel disappeared just like that. And he said, oh my, that was Jesus I was with him all along, and I didn't know it. Like the two men on the road to Emmaus were with him and never even knew it. Like Mary, if you've taken my master, tell me where he is. Mary, Rabboni. And I thought, I saw Jesus. And I dropped that book, and I just started praying. I said, Lord, Jesus, let me see you again. Please, because I didn't know who it was. I didn't know I'd been with Jesus. I said, show me again. Nothing. And I was just crying because I didn't recognize who it was. And I walked into the house, and there was this dirty mirror in China, so many things like that. And it was crap. As I walked by the mirror, I saw my eyes. And I saw Jesus here through my eyes. Blue eyes. And he said, I have never left you. I've always been in you. I will never leave you or forsake you. And his eyes are the same as your eyes, and your eyes, and your eyes. Because he lives in you. And you look at somebody, and you start being a Christian, which means Christ-like. They'll see Jesus in you. And many times I'll go places and they'll say, who are you? There was a family of black people took me out to eat in Nashville just uh, right before I came here. And I was telling them something about that. 
we were checking in, and the girl there was checking in. She said, who are you? I know you. I said, maybe not now, but you will. And the black family said, oh, did you hear that? And I said, it happens all the time. This Christ likeness. He will increase, and what? We will decrease. John the Baptist. Okay, let me say something too about this anointing. Because everybody says, I want to be like Elisha. I want a double anointing. And that filthy tallit that Elijah was carrying around, it must have stunk. It was dirty. He slapped the water with it two times. And Elisha said, I want a double portion. If you see me go, you can have that. And he saw him go. And he took that mantle and he did more miracles than Elijah, remember? I don't want that, that dirty Old Testament thing. I want everything that pertains to life and godliness. I want everything that pertains to the body of Christ. I want everything that belongs to me. And that's why I'm here today to tell you these things. Because that belongs to you, all the way in the back corner there. It belongs to you, it belongs to you, it belongs to all of us, and it's mine! I'll never let it go. No turning back. No turning back. Hallelujah. There's no way I'm going to go back on that. Well, that girl in China got a revelation of who God was. And once you see, you will not get confused in this Old Testament. When I teach people in China how to read the Bible, I say, you have to start at the beginning, John 3.16. For God so loved the world. That's not, I said, that's the beginning of our Bible and the gospel. And then after you read John 3.16, you read the book of John. And after you read the book of John, you read the gospels. And after you read the gospels, you read this whole New Testament. And if you read that and you come to me, I'll give you a whole Bible. But I'm telling you what. The Old Testament is history. The Old Testament is a shadow. The Old Testament is vague. And as a shadow, you know, we had that beautiful papaya. If there's a papaya tree, I'm not going to run to that tree and grab the papaya shadow. I'm going to reach up and grab the real thing. But that's what I used to do. Because I love the Bible. I was a Bible scholar. I know the Old Testament so well. I read Hebrew. I can speak it. I live with the Jews and uh, function and operate in Hebrew. But you know what? They had nothing. When they danced at the end with their Torah, come on, Peter, dance with us. And that big Torah, da, 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 five books of Moses dancing around like that. Come on, Peter. I didn't want to because I'm dancing with the living word. Living color. Not black and white letters on a page. And I'm rejoicing in it. And when I was gone, they would say, that is Peter. There was explosions. It was during the Passover war. Terrible things were happening. But they felt peace when I was with them because there was protection. And they were not under the protection of anything in the Old Covenant. Paul said that the law was added. Remember? It was added. Okay, this is good theology because it's New Testament theology. It's Gospel theology. And Alan, we need to teach this because if we don't, people will get confused by the Bible. Like I told you last time, when they had the Bible in China, they couldn't read it. They would get to Numbers or Deuteronomy and stop. And even if they would start in Matthew, what do you have? A genealogy. Oh, Taifuza. Too complicated. We can't do that. Okay, now, here's something else about the theology of this. You all know this word. I don't even have to write it. Immutability. God is immutable. He doesn't change, right? Well, He chooses to change. For us. He chose to forget our sins, didn't he? Isaiah 30, or no, Jeremiah 31, 34. Their sins and iniquities, I will remember it no more. How can a God who's omniscient forget things? 
because he chooses to. And Jesus, being God, learned obedience through the things that he suffered. He learned them. He learned them. He learned them. He grew as God and man. Where's Lazarus? Where did you lay him? Well, if Jesus was on mission, he would have known right where they lay him. Many situations like that. But that was Jesus in his humility. And that's where you are too. In your humility, you're being broken here on this earth. You're sharing in the sufferings of Christ so that you can be above the angels. The angels wish they could come here. They wish they could be you. you. They wish they could suffer like Jesus did. But they can't. And for a while, Jesus was a little lower than the angels in that war. Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to read that in a minute. And guess what? We're a little lower than the angels too in that war. Above with him. Not me. You go ahead and you say that. And you can stay and feed the cows and the pigs with Adam and his race. And those people there, if you ever even get into heaven. But immutability, you know, that's just gone. Because it's a conditional immutability. God allows us to change too. And he changes his mind all the time. Even in the old covenant. Because it depends on the situation and the circumstances. And his love for you. Do you know what? God would move heaven and earth for you. He would. And he is. You don't see half of the miracles that he does. He loves you. And that's my father. He loves me. I saw a little black boy that was lost in the mall. And he was standing there crying. And I said, where's your mother? Do you want me to help you find your mother? And she said, no! My mother said, stand here, she'll find me. I said, well, how do you know she will come back? And he said, because my mama, she loved me. <laughs> yeah, she loved me. <laughs> well, <laughs> I got some good stuff here. I'm, I'm glad that I've got two hours because I got stuff to tell you, and this is wonderful. And um, tomorrow, I'm gonna start ministering more for other people besides Bible students. And then we can you can invite some of your friends because it will be very wonderful. I'll be talking about Father God and Sonship and telling stories about some of the things that I've done overseas. And they're wonderful stories because I can't believe some of the things that God has done in my life. But then you know why he does? I just keep moving forward and I don't look back. When I pray for people, I don't stop and see, is everything going to happen? No. I just pray and I go. And that's just the thing about it. Okay. The difficulty, the difficulty with living a holy life in the Old Covenant is this. It's because it is impossible. It was impossible for David to do it. It was impossible for Elijah and Elisha to do it. It was impossible for Isaiah to do it. And when Jesus came, it was not impossible for him. And he did that. And that's why you don't understand Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because you don't realize when you say, when you see Jesus saying, if your hand offends you, cut it off. Because it's better to lose a hand than end up in hell with two hands. If your eye offends you, pluck it out and cast it away. Because it's better than if you, you know, I offend you than end up in hell. And if your foot how many people do you see jumping around like this? With one hand, one foot, and one eye. No, because it's impossible. And that's why Jesus spoke that way. And the Jews said, this is impossible. And yes, it was. But not for him. So many of the things that Jesus spoke about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, these four Gospels, they don't apply to us. Some of them, because they can't. Because we can't fulfill these things. But we looked at Jesus in thanksgiving and say, thank you. Thank you that you fulfilled the law for me. And the law has become our friend. The law is our... I was afraid of the things of the law. My goodness. 
I was afraid God would strike me down, but you know what? When I learned about God the Father, I was in my worst place. I had sinned. And I thought, I'm no more fit to be a missionary anymore. I want to go home. And some old lady said, yeah, you should go home. And I said, okay, I'm going to go home. And I said, no! I remember the promises that God gave me. And then I heard a preacher. He said, God's not mad at you. He's not even in a bad mood. Because Jesus took all my sin, past, present, and future. My theology wouldn't let me accept that. He paid for my future sins too. He better, because he's not going to die on the cross two times. <laughs> not for you or not for me. As much as he loves you, he won't. And I'm not going to be like some of these Catholic Filipinos who will put myself on a cross and try to die and see if that will work. <laughs> because it won't work. So remember, death, resurrection, ascension, Jesus casting Satan out of the heavens to earth. Now there's a new heaven, no accuser. And there's a new earth too. This is the old earth. And this is the old heavens that we're living in right now. And one day these will be dissolved and there will be no more of that. But woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The devil has come down to you and he has great wrath. And I was afraid until I learned who I was. I'm not afraid anymore. In Haiti, the voodoo scared me every day because I thought, they're going to kill me. And they tried to kill me. They circled my house, tried to kill us one night, screaming and shooting guns. And they told me that they were going to come and kill us. But then when they got around the house, I grabbed the baby and ran downstairs. And my wife was running downstairs. And we got down there. We got outside. And I was shaking like this. And I didn't know what to do. And the little baby was going, dip -a -dip -a -dip -a -dip -a -dip -a and she was laughing so hard. And then my wife started laughing. And I said, What's wrong here? And then I started laughing real hard, and somebody ah! let out a scream, and they all screamed and ran away. They had seen an angel. I heard about that, and then the next day, I, I thought, wow, wouldn't it be something if I could see that angel? And I did. It's just like a flash. It was like in that flash, I saw this gigantic being with a sword that turned two ways and eyes of fire, and I fell backwards, shaking. But that's just an angel. John fell at the angel's feet like a dead man. And he said, get up. Don't worship me. Two times John did that. Worship God. I am one of your brethren. He was just a glorified saint. Spirits of just men made perfect. Aren't they all ministering spirits? Yeah, we're going to read that in Hebrews in just a minute here. Okay, I'm glad I've got more time today. Okay, let me see here. I wonder if I should take a break right now. Um, let's take a break right now and come back at 3 o'clock, okay? Because I might need to go a little bit longer today. Great, great.